So last week, Pastor Mark started us on the first parts of Psalm 139. Verses 1 through 6 are about how holy God knows us. And today we continue our series with verses 7 through 12. If you'd like to follow along, which I know is very helpful for me at times, the book of Psalms is right before Proverbs and right after Job. And 139 is closer to the end. My mother is a great storyteller. And one of our family favorites is known as the Rover story. It's about my grandfather's grandmother, Ethie. And my mom could tell it better than I can, but if you'll allow me to paraphrase, it goes like this. When Ethie was a girl in the 1860s, she lived on a farm in western Pennsylvania with her siblings, her parents, and her dog, Rover. One day, her father packed up their wagon for the market in Pittsburgh and brought Ethie and Rover with him. They traveled some 30 miles across the Monongahela River into the city and spent the day there. They sold everything they had to sell, and when it came time to go home that night, Rover was nowhere to be found. Now, they looked and they looked, but the clock was ticking, and it came to the point where they had to go home. Very upset, they returned to the farm without Rover and went to bed. The next morning at breakfast, a scratching came out the door, and what did they open it to find but a very tired and very wet Rover? This story taught me from a young age that if someone loves you, they will find a way to be with you in one way or another, wherever you are. No matter where you go, they will find a way to come home to you. And this isn't just true for dogs. It goes for everything in life, especially your faith. One of the perks of being a child of God is that God loves you more than anything could ever love anything else. God's job is to love everyone, so it doesn't matter where you are because God doesn't pay airfare. Any parents here today will back me up when I say that around December every year, their children all of a sudden decide to behave. <laughs> they know Santa is watching, and they know Santa will donate their toys and give them coal if they do decide to misbehave. But God is not like Santa. Maybe our behavior doesn't warrant God's love at times, but our behavior does not change how God loves us. That's God's job. In preparing for this sermon, I broke out my reference Bible, a tool that if you don't already have one, you should get one, uh, because it's one of the most useful things I own, and it's very insightful to kind of see the analysis behind some of these passages. And in describing our passage for today, it reads, because God is omnipresent, you can never be lost to God's spirit. When someone says something is omnipresent, they mean that it is always there. It reminds me of the song that I sang as a kid, he's got the whole world in his hands, where God has everyone right here. He's got my brothers and sisters in his hands. He's got the moon and the stars in his hands. He's got the wind and the clouds in his hands. And he's got everyone everywhere in his hands. Omnipresence is something the Bible talks a lot about. In fact, it's in every book of the Bible at some point. But that's not very surprising, is it? It's kind of God's thing to watch over you. Without that, God's job is pretty much cut in half. In 11 days, I graduate high school. Three days later, I move in to Penn State summer session. And by the time I come home for break, my home will be the Butler family's new house in Annandale, Virginia. This is the last time I'll be in Westside for a long time. Like most of my classmates here today, I was baptized here. 
And it's scary to leave somewhere so great as this, but missing something is how you know it was good. God will show up. God knows the way and will show up at our doors wherever we are. And as my mother told me when I asked her how she feels about leaving her home of 30 years, the road between friends is well-traveled. Someone asked me recently what my sermon would be about. And without thinking, I said, you can run and you can hide, but God's going to find you. <laughs> now, you can take that how you want. Does it sound menacing, like God is lurking in the shadows and watching you everywhere you go? Maybe. But to me, it's a comfort knowing that I cannot scare God away from me by however I may stray in my life from God. We've all had times where we question our faith, and some of those times are more like phases of atheism than question marks. Some of those periods last longer than we'd like to admit. But despite that, Psalm 139 tells us that God does not care if you have doubt, even if you try to run, even if, like in the passage, you try to cover yourself in darkness in an effort to hide from God, God will love you and God will find you. Each of us have experienced and worked through darkness in our lives. Times when a cloud of that darkness follows us around, rejecting the good things people try to do for us, and sometimes we choose for that cloud to be there. Sometimes we, we reject God in the same way we reject others, because in those times it's easier to hate than to love. But we don't always move from God out of malice or resentment. Without thinking about it, we may stray. And there's a wide range of reasons for this. When we work through some phases of life, we need every ounce of energy we have just to get through the day. You may be busy, or you may struggle with just getting out of bed in the morning. You put on blinders to manage the day-to-day -day doings. And without meaning to, those blinders sometimes also shut out God. Some people find they come closer to God in these times, but not all of us do. And that just makes it that much more difficult for us. God is there for you then too, though. Because when you forget about God in those times, that's when you need to remember God's love for you most. This is not exclusive to life transitions being difficult or middle school being terrible. <laughs> this is a shared human experience. Times of hurt and anger and confusion have no face. There is no maximum or minimum age for them, and nobody is exempt from them. There is no magic word that takes the unrest away, and God is not a fixer. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would always be with us as a supporter, as a comforter, as an advocate, but not a problem solver. In Hebrew, the word for spirit is the same as the word for breath. God is as close as the breath you breathe, and you cannot escape that. Being Christian does not mean that you have an easy life, but God is waiting for you when you come back because God never left. In this week and the weeks to come, find someone who needs love like what God gives. All I ask is you choose one person, it may be a friend, a relative, a stranger, even yourself. And even if you feel you can't possibly understand the world they live in, love them anyway. Do for them what God does for you. Show up and love. Even if you have to trek 
30-some miles and across the Monongahela River, because if Rover could do it, you can too. May God bless you in your journeys. Amen.